A long time ago, I made a video discussing the hardest gods in Smite. It was an opinion piece back then, it is still an opinion piece now, but if I was to make it now, I'd probably place some gods differently. There have been some buffs and some nerfs to certain gods that would make them harder or easier, and there have been new gods like the Morrigan that would definitely get a spot on this list. But one god that stood out to me that people kept talking about, especially in the comment section, and then also talked about a lot in future videos, was Sir Cat. A lot of people seem to think that Sir Cat is one of the harder gods to play in Smite. In this video, I want to give you counterpoints to that. I want to explain why I don't think Sir Cat is a hard god and how you can make it relatively easy to play for yourself. Now note that I'm not saying Sir Cat is super easy. There are most certainly easier gods out there. I'm also not saying that I'm an expert at Sir Cat at all. You will see me make plenty of mistakes in this video and probably in some moments not even follow the advice that I will give you just because it was a reactionary thing in that very fight and I just made a mistake. Mistakes are bound to happen, that doesn't make the character necessarily hard though. One thing that would make a character harder is for example the tolerance for mistakes that you can make with that character. So think for example of Zeus. Zeus has a relatively easy kit and on lower levels of play he can relatively easily stomp enemies just by bursting them with pure damage. On higher levels of play, Zeus will get punished very, very quickly for mispositioning, for falling behind or not farming perfectly at any point of the game. So if you make a mistake with Zeus on a high level of play, you're most likely losing a lot because of it. That doesn't make Zeus an inherently hard character as he still has easy to land abilities, but it also makes it so that he is generally not considered the easiest god in the game. Chuck, while harder to execute at a higher level of play, as you have to make an impact with him in later stages, is generally considered an easy god. He has easy to hit abilities, he has easy sustain, he has an easy lane clear, and he's also relatively safe, meaning that mistakes aren't punished easily. And now we look at Sir Cat. Sir Cat has two hard CCs in her kit, both her two and her ultimate have hard CC, and she also has two mobility abilities that can be used as escapes, of which one also has a stealth. That means that unless you have an Awilish on the enemy team, she is, along with Janos, one of the best gods at escaping. She furthermore benefits from building cooldown reduction in general, and that just increases her escape potential. So with Cat, unless you get incredibly hard focused or you're very far behind, dying is something that will not happen all that often. So in terms of survivability, there's a whole bunch of gods that are harder. That is, unless you constantly use your 3 to engage. I would not recommend doing that. Instead, I would recommend getting Blink. Blink is an incredibly strong relic on Sir Cat that further enhances her already very high mobility, allows her to escape when she already built some distance, or engage with it and not use her escapes in order to deal damage. And as such, in situations where you can't just walk in on the enemy, instead of having to use your 3, you can just use your Blink instead. But Duke, then I won't get a poison stack when I engage. Well, actually your 3 doesn't give you any poison stacks anyways, so that doesn't matter. It would just be a little bit of extra damage, but you're usually much better off having the escape for that and getting the damage off in other ways. Next, there's the part about clearing. And so Cat is actually not bad at clearing, at least jungle at all. Her 1 is a very strong clearing tool, and even her lane clear is among the assassins one of the better ones as she can dash a whole wave. Obviously, laning Sir Cat is rather hard to play because she really isn't designed for it, but that goes for pretty much any assassin. Her damage is also very high and much less item dependent than other assassins. Due to the fact that Last Breath will always have the full 100% healing reduction and will always deal true damage, you will get plenty out of your ultimate even when you fall behind. In fact, so much that Saket has been played as a support in the SPL, as she really doesn't rely on items for a lot of her damage. And not only that, many popular builds for Saket at the moment don't even include many damage items to begin with, even as a jungler. Often we'll see items like Spirit Rope, Mantle of Discord, Mystical Mail, Masamune, Unsealer, all that kind of stuff, all these tanky items, and just make her work around that. That way she becomes almost unkillable due to all the extra protections that she gets in addition to her mobility, but she will still have all that damage through her ultimate, and in combination with Titan's Bane you will still get decent damage out of your other abilities as well, so that's not like that would be falling off because of it. While her looks and her design definitely don't indicate it, 
Among the assassins, Sir Cat is one of those who loses the least by going into full defense, as she has so much true damage. The only ones that compete with that are those with built-in shred, basically. So, what do we have so far? Easy, jungle clear, very high survivability and high mobility in combination, flexible build options, because you can still go for the crit route as well and deal a ridiculous amount of damage that way, good burst potential and good lockdown. What's left? Why do people think that Sir Cat is hard? Most of it, at least from what I can tell, is down to her 1 and her 2. The combo between those two seems to be rather hard for people and there are some other things in combination with that that kind of require you to read her passive as well, which many people don't do to begin with. So first of all, let's talk about the passive because that's the simple topic here. If you use her 1, her 2 or her ultimate, you will apply a poison to the target. Consuming poisons will deal damage to the enemy. Much like her ultimate, the damage here does not depend on items. It's 10% when 2 poisons are consumed and 25% when 3 poisons are consumed. Unlike her ultimate, it counts as physical damage. That means that while damage items don't benefit this, penetration items will. The more penetration you have, up to 50 plus percentage penetration, both factors in for the damage of this. Even something like Executioner or Void Shield, Protection Shred, would theoretically factor in here, though mostly you will not see those items on Sir Cat for various reasons. There's one important thing to note here. One poison will deal no extra damage at all. That means if you try to do normal basic attack cancel in between your attacks, you will actually lose damage. Instead, you want to use your combo first. Now, how much of your combo you use and if you're going for 2 or 3 poisons depends on your cooldown mostly. If you have a target locked down and you use your 2 and 1 on them, which is what you typically do first, then you will just use your basic attack afterwards and consume the poison if your ultimate isn't up or you don't want to use your ultimate in that situation because you feel like you don't need it or you will need it more in a situation later, for example, to focus out a hell or something like that. In those situations, you can then proceed to basic attack if the target's still alive and do whatever, basically. You are fine to consume the poisons after two being stacked. With the ultimate, it's a little different. You want to make sure to use your ultimate and the two and one Depending on which combo you do, the auto may differ here, but you definitely want to use all three of them before you consume the poisons. So if you hit a target with your 2-1 combo and you feel like you're not gonna kill them off by just using your basic attack after, but that's a priority target and you need to kill them right then, use the ultimate and then use the basic attack to consume all three poisons. In order to do that, you want to try and throw the target in a direction where you will land another basic attack on them. Ideally, you throw them into a wall close to you so they can't fly away as far or you throw them more towards your base so they maybe use their escape to get over you and you're closer to them once again and hopefully aren't too close to any other walls that they can get over and get away from you. Most of this already sounds more complex than it is because within two or three games you will easily get the hang of it yourself. The other part are her combos and hitting her one. Now the thing with her one is that if you're very close to a target and you just aim down to the ground, you can be pretty sure that you will hit all three ticks of the one on them, assuming that they're walking towards you. So what do you want to do to make them walk towards you? You use your two, because that taunts them and makes them walk towards you. So the ideal timing will always be using the one right after the two. That won't always be possible, sometimes you'd have to hope for the enemy to be greedy and basically walk into you, or sometimes you will just not connect all ticks of the one, but it's not necessarily an issue either. You can still crit on less ticks, you can still apply the poison that way, and you can still follow up with other abilities if it wasn't enough, or you can just use the one to get out and still deal a little bit of damage on the way out. If you want to do the perfect chain, then you do a basic attack before you use the two, so you get some extra damage off that way. But in many situations that's not really possible, is if you get that close to the enemy, they will already start using their escapes or similar. In that regard, it's worth noting that Circuit's 2 takes a bit of time getting used to, as it has a fair bit of delay compared to other abilities, but once you get the hang of that, that doesn't really feel hard anymore either. And sometimes you just miss it and you just hit them on the second shot instead. Obviously, ideally you want to hit both shots of Cobra's Kiss on the target, but quite often I would rather go for a bit more of a spray method where you try to hit them in with at least one of them when you're not that confident with hitting it yet, as the extra damage often isn't even necessary. In situations where you're 100% sure that you want to use your ultimate, you can start the combo with your ult and drop the ult onto a target, then use your 2 and then your 1. That way you will also ensure the full combo and if the enemy uses beats, they will still have taken the full damage of your ultimate at least. Theoretically you could also do things like minion bombing with the ultimate. 
But generally speaking, that's more of a gimmicky thing and I wouldn't recommend it in most situations. What for me personally is much harder than anything else is finding a way to close out a game. So Cat's tower damage is not exactly impressive and while she's very good at picking out isolated targets, her team fight in general is a bit lackluster unless that target explodes in the team and other assassins just do much better at that job. So therefore, while I don't believe her kit is hard at all, it can still be a struggle to win a game with her in that regard as you have to be able to rely on teammates at least a little bit for them to do the parts of the job that you can't do. But again, that's also true for many other assassins. And with that, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope to see you all for the next one tomorrow. If you're not subscribed yet, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell. It really helps me out. And also gives you the chance to win some codes. Top comment of the day from the joke about Titan's Bane video, Titan's Bane vs Executioner, goes to Chris McGims. Guess you can say Titan's Bane has been executed. I'm sorry you had to witness that. Duke Sloth, out.